Hey guys, Josh Marriott here, the tech enabled agent, and I'm super excited to share with you guys the top 10 phone apps that every single real estate agent needs to download today, starting with Genius Scan. Genius Scan was one of the first phone apps that I downloaded, and it was awesome. Now, there's lots of other softwares out there that do the same thing, but I really like Genius Scan, and it's free. So I'm sure you found yourself in the position where you've got a document, you need to get it to the title company, the lender, your client or the other agent or whatnot, and you find yourself going to the office or going back home to scan it, you have a scanner in your pocket. Just get the Genius Scan app and you just take a picture of it. It'll convert it to a PDF and you can email it directly from within the app to yourself or to wherever it needs to go. So it's a pretty cool app. Check it out, highly recommend it. This next app, I have been looking for this solution for almost a decade. When I first got started in the business, I found myself sending out a lot of text messages to people, the same message over and over again. I would copy it, paste it to a bunch of people, you know, something along the lines of, hey, I just had an opening in my schedule. Do you have your eyes on any properties that we can go check out today or what have you? And then over time, I started experimenting with some software. I got CRMs that would send out mass blast text messaging. Um, but if you know anything about CRMs or mass blast, texting, you will find out that you have to use a different phone number. You can't use your own cell phone to send out those mass blast text messages until now. Reach is the first program I have found that allows you to send messages directly from your phone and even send iMessages. If you're on an iPhone and the person you're sending a message to is on an iPhone, the messages will come across the blue bubble, which makes it look like not spam and is more personable and it looks like it's coming from you because it is coming from you. In fact, Reach uses your phone to send messages. It uses the shortcuts app. Now you don't really need to know how it does this, but just know that it will send out messages from your iPhone directly to a group of people and it won't do a group message, it'll do individual messages. Now, Androids have this ability kind of built into the phone. You can do up to like 20 people at a time using some apps built in from your cell phone, but this allows you to do it from an iPhone which prior to this app, I could not find a way to do that. So this is freaking awesome. Now, downside is you can't do like mass huge blasts. You can't send thousands of messages. Theoretically you could, but you can't really use your phone while it's sending messages. So really 50 to 100 people is about your cap. Super useful in my opinion. Let me know if you end up using the Reach app. Up next is kind of a two for one, the Splice app and the CapCut app. Both are professional video editing applications for your phone. Now they're not as powerful as desktop apps, but they get pretty darn close. So if you need to edit some video for maybe some short form content and you just want to do it really quick on your phone, there's way better options out there than your native camera editor. Uh, Splice and CapCut are the top two front runners. Sure, which one I like better. They have some differences, so check them both out. See which one you like better. There is something major about the CapCut app that gives it a slight advantage in my opinion, and that's the ability to move the audio. So let's say you have a video and the dub is off a little bit. You know, it's just not lip syncing correctly. You can move the audio within CapCut to fix that. You can't do that in Splice. Uh, CapCut has a lot of cool templates. Splice also has templates, so they're both growing in that regard. Uh, so check them out, let me know which one you like better. Up next is a program mainly for PC users, and that's only because iPhone users can do this natively. So if you ever wanted to use your phone as a webcam, Apple actually just came out with an update about a month ago that allows you to plug your phone directly into an Apple computer and use it as a webcam. So you can use your $1,000 camera instead of having to buy a DSLR, so you can have professional webcam footage. Epoch Cam allows you to do that with a PC or with an Apple. I don't know why you'd use it with an Apple uh, with their new update, but if you have a PC and an iPhone, you can now connect your iPhone to a PC using Epoch Cam. Uh, so literally, it's just a super simple app that will allow you to see your phone as a webcam option on the computer. Pretty cool. I hope you're getting some value out of this video so far. If you would, just hit the like button and subscribe if you wanna see some more. Up next is an app called Houz, H-O-U-Z-Z. -Z. Now Houz is really useful for seeing trends in interior design. So if you have some clients that want to update their bathroom or kitchen, you can look at some modern updated kitchens to get inspiration. Maybe find something that's similar to that one. Maybe they painted the cabinets or changed out the countertops, but there's lots of cool pictures that you can just browse on this app to see some inspiration. Let me know what you think of the house app. Now I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this next one, but I actually like the 
Zillow app. So Zillow is the number one consumer search portal for good reason. It's got a great user interface. It has a lot of cool features and I actually use it as a real estate agent. And there's a couple different ways I use that. Number one is to get information really quick. So for example, yesterday I got this incoming cold call from a seller looking to sell his property and he was asking me all these questions, you know, and I'm not sitting from a computer. I can't pull up this property. I don't even know anything about it. And so I, the quickest thing for me to do is actually open the Zillow app and pull the property up there. And so if you pull up a property on the Zillow app, you get a lot of information. Uh, really quick, uh, which is why I like it. For example, the Zestimate. Yeah, I know it's not accurate, but sometimes it is. And in fact, usually it's fairly accurate. Yeah, I know their iBuyer program went out of business because they're using their Zestimate. They also weren't going into homes and looking at them. I'm not planning on listing a property without looking at it. And so this will give you a general you know, range depending on a lot of factors, but it can get pretty darn close. And you can see a lot of pictures sometimes. Sometimes you'll see old listing photos. You can ask them while you're on the phone with them. Hey, does your kitchen still have this? Have you done any updates since these photos were taken? So it kind of sounds like you know what you're talking about. And if someone tells you they want to list their home for 3 million, this estimate says 1.2 maybe they're a little cuckoo and it might not be worth your time unless they've done a ton of updates or something ridiculous like that. So their Zillow app does have a purpose. What do you use to pull up properties really quick? I'd love to know. Up next is Mojo on the go, which is a bit of a niche app in that if you're not making calls or prospecting, you probably never heard of Mojo and you're probably never going to use it. A lot of people like using Mojo to call people extremely quickly. You can call all sorts of people. You can call for sale by owners, expires, you can call lists of probates. You can even circle neighborhood, pull their phone numbers and call them. So let's say you have an open house on the weekend. You could pull two streets, mass call them, drop voicemails, invite them to your open house this weekend. That's what Mojo does. They have an app, which I really like because if you're just sitting in a parking lot, pop the app open, click Fizbo, click play, boom, it's calling Fizbos. Like just like that easy. It's crazy. Um, so highly recommend it. If you have any interest in Mojo and you don't already have it, shoot me a line. I have a invite I can send your way. Up next is Waze. In my opinion, Waze is the best maps app. And what I mean by that is it will give you point A to point B faster than Google Maps, faster than Apple Maps, faster than any other map I've ever found. The way it's able to do that is because it uses real-time user data and users can interact with it. So people will actually tell you there's a cop coming up or there's something in the road or you know there's an accident or whatever. So you can know what's coming up before it happens and it will reroute you and it might take you down some side road instead of the highway. But bottom line is you're gonna get from A to B faster, which really adds up if you're showing property after property and you need to reduce the amount of time you're driving. No one likes driving across town and wasting time doing it. So you might as well get there quicker. Now, one downside to the Waze app, and it is a battery hog. So make sure you have a cord plugged into your car so that you can properly use it without just draining your battery. Up next is an app called Captions. Captions will create those awesome Alex Hermosi style bubble text with emoji captions for your short form content. Lickety split. You literally just upload a video within 60 seconds. You've got captions. You can change the font, you can change the size, you can change the color, you can move the emojis around. It's really cool and it's super fast. Uh, so I highly recommend this app. Uh, earlier we looked at CapCut. CapCut is able to add captions, but they're not the same style and it's a lot more work to do it. This, you can literally pick your text and style really fast. You can edit the words if it's wrong, you can delete some words and just export it uh, really quick. Uh, one limitation with it is three minute maximum, which I find annoying because I think it'd be really cool if I could you know, export an entire YouTube video and throw it in for captions, but they give you a cap of three minutes max and they don't have a desktop version. It's just for phone, uh, but bottom line, I like it, I use it. Let me know if you're putting captions in your video. Yes. Up next is the Canva app. Canva obviously has a desktop component, but they also have a phone app. And the phone app is phenomenal. It does everything you can do on the desktop in the palm of your hand. So check it out. I know it's a little bit scary using any sort of editing software that you've never used. It's really user-friendly, intuitive. You'll learn how to use it really quick and you can make pretty much any sort of graphic with it. It already has all the sizes. So if you're making a banner for YouTube or if you're making an Instagram post, it knows what size it needs to be. Little bonus app for you, so go ahead and call some local title companies and ask them 
what apps they have for you to do net sheets or to calculate title policies. So every state has different rules and pricing for their title policies and net sheets and how that all works out. But every title company has that stuff ready to go. In fact, they mostly whitelist apps, meaning they all have the same app from some company with just their name on it. It just looks a little bit different, but it's the same app. So call up your favorite title company and find out what app they can give you for that. I actually just like a simple title policy calculator where I type in the home price and it tells me how much the title policy costs because the other closing costs are pretty easy for me to come up with on the fly. But the title policy involves a little bit of math and it's the biggest question on the contract. You know, what happens if I move title policy from paid by seller to paid by buyer? How much will that save the seller? Well, without the calculator, you don't know. You can only guess. What apps are you using in your business? I'd love to know in the comments down below. YouTube thinks you're going to like this video next. Let me know what you think of their algorithm.